You know, I have a, I have a lot of expectations when it comes to an early Dick Grayson story, um, because like Ryan, my favorite Robin is Dick Grayson. Really, one of my all time favorite DC characters is Dick Grayson. And um, I have never understood the predilection that certain Batman fans have to discount Robin's place in the mythology. It never made sense to me, particularly uh, in more slightly more modern stories that recharacterized what he meant to the dynamic of uh, of Gotham City and what he meant to Batman himself when he came onto the scene and actually started acting as as his partner. Um, some of my all-time favorite comic book reading experiences when it comes to just the Batman world have to do with Dick Grayson's time as Robin. More modern stories like Batman Chronicles the Gauntlet is a wonderful story with impeccable Lee Weeks artwork. And it's oh, all Lee about Weeks. the the, the so training good. that Robin goes through. And then chronologically after that, you have the Chuck Dixon Robin Year One series, which... I adore. I mean, just like Batgirl year one is really solid. Robin year one is an awesome look at what makes him such a particularly gifted kid and a really incredible crime fighter. Um, and also, you know, it gives service to the balance that he provides. So coming off of stories like the gauntlet and like Robin year one, in addition to some other stories that have sort of retold Dick's time as Robin, like there was a pretty solid Batman and Robin annual that took place while Dick was Robin. That was uh, during the new 52. Um, I'm still not totally sure about that costume, but either way, uh, going into this, I had a lot of expectations attached to it, which I was afraid of because inevitably, if you build something up, what can meet those expectations, but really each successive issue. And I think it, this, the first issue was incredibly solid, but I think it really took off for me in number two, when the Titans came into the fold. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk um, about that in a second. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the idea of Dick having to find uh, kind of another surrogate family, even though he's already been taken in by by uh, by a family, it was just a decidedly grumpy guy at the head of that family. Um, I think that the Titans dynamic is something that really doesn't have quite enough recognition in terms of the broader. DC universe. I know there's a show right now and uh, you know, there's varying levels of, of truthfulness that that has hit for me in the episodes that I've watched. I admittedly haven't seen all of it, but um, I love the, the dynamic of the fab five of the original Titans. And it's not something that you see retold in modern stories very much. But then by the time you get to number three, that is the issue that for me really encapsulates this as a definitive Dick Grayson Robin story. Because if there is any fundamental theme that you should attach to Dick Grayson as Robin, at least in my mind, it is the fact that he doesn't need to be Batman Jr. And he should yeah. not aspire to just be like his mentor because he's not. Ultimately, by the time he becomes Nightwing, Dick Grayson is arguably... Uh, among the entirety of the bat family, the most psychologically well-adjusted person who is active in the bat family. He provides such a foundation for everybody to operate from. And um, I, I think that was really brilliantly uh, encapsulated in Grant Morrison's run in particular, because Damien came from a very broken home and he needed, uh, he needed a rock to attach to. And of course it's going to be Dick Grayson, but how does that begin? Where does that start? How does a kid who has gone through such a debilitating loss at such a young age in such a shockingly violent way come to terms with that loss in a way that is healthy while he goes out and gets blood on his gloves every once in a while? It's a very tricky balance. And I think Lemire nailed it. Dick Grayson is supposed to be the counterbalancing light to the darkness of Bruce Wayne. And, um, and there's... There's just a lot to love about Dick Grayson as a character who is able to lean on the relationships and lean into uh, communities in ways that Batman just can't and has not and has a predilection against. So I was shocked that this story managed to hit all of those notes. It has everything that I wanted in a Dick Grayson Robin story. And it had just enough subtle foreshadowing not to be like a goofy wink at the camera. Like you see, this is the building block 
of the incredible hero that Nightwing becomes. But that takes nothing away from how awesome Robin is. The original Robin. God damn. We just went to church, Ryan. We just went to it's, church. God look, damn. It's, it's, I can't. Woo, I, I guys, mean, say that, coming off, right, read more comics. See you guys later. Yeah. Uh, it's, damn, it's just, bro. There's not damn. much else that... I mean, Batman is obviously like one of my all-time favorite characters in fiction. He's probably like very nearly at the top. But the the you need to define darkness by the light that shines against it. And that's what Robin is. That's what Robin is always supposed to be, except for, I mean, Damien, they reverse the Batman Robin dynamic. That was what was so cool about that set of stories. But in this case, Robin is the guy that provides the definition to the shadow. And, uh, and this story just pulls that off brilliantly. So I I think you, you touch on something that I think is really, really well done. And the fact that, Dick is the most well-adjusted of all the Bat family, but I think the main one of the main things that I got out of this anyway, and again, I'm, I'm not sure. And there's a couple things I need to ask you, Bat experts. That I, again, I I'm not, I know my Batman, but I don't know as well as you guys do, obviously. So there's a couple things in here I'll, we'll, we'll touch on in a second, but um, and I'll let you go here in a second, Ryan, before I I, I have my questions. Uh, but my my thing is when I was reading the story. And I always knew that Dick was that most well-adjusted. And, you know, why is that? I want to think that he had the example of Bruce and Alfred. And I think that Lemire really nails the differences between the both men, which they're, they're obviously very different. That, that's, that, that's obvious. But what I think is, I think that Alfred really helped shape Dick in a way where he didn't have to be like Bruce, where he'd be brooding all the time. Because... Because unlike uh, Dick, B- Bruce Wayne didn't have someone that was uh, over, you know, next to him to be, you know, look at and see the brooding side and say, "I don't want to be like that." Because you know, and again, I only, it's okay to brood. I mean, that's Batman's character. Right? Bruce Wayne is a serious person, but Dick grew up around that, and you know, th- like we all love our, most of us will love our parents. We don't always want to be like our parents because. It's just you see that negative aspect of that of that character, even though that's what drives them a lot of times. You see that side and go, well, I don't want to be like that. I'll improve off that. I think when he had when you have Alfred and you have Bruce together and you have Alfred kind of showing you, you know, this is what you don't want to be necessarily. You know, and I think they Lemire really nails that in the series that that fatherly aspect, you know, he basically has two dads, right? And again, I don't mean that in a funny, you know, way or anything like that, but it's what he does. He has two fatherly figures and he learns from each one a little bit differently. Whereas Bruce didn't have that. Bruce only had his rage and he had Alfred. That's it. Again, depending on what story you want to go with. And I think that's, what's so interesting about what Lemire does here. He really brings up that aspect of Alfred and really shows and Alfred shows uh, Dick, why it's not good to be like that and why you need to have that light and embrace that side of yourself and don't be don't feel like you have to live you know live um measure up to bruce's you know dark you know darkness and i think that it was really nice to see that that aspect was you know was nurtured by alfred and again that whole idea of really bringing the idea of fact of, of bruce really you know is is well is person. J- so just quick just quickly before ryan jumps in Another critical component of that is Alfred because Alfred is the guy who sees what nurturing the skill without Mm -hmm. necessarily the, the emotional mediation that someone like Bruce probably could have used, what it leads to. And early on in Batman's career, a lot of the stories are defined by his anger and his rage and the fact that he doesn't have those mediating influences really until he brings Gordon into the fold far more and by then you're already really close to to dick grayson coming in so yeah. alfred also understands the importance of making sure look look i maybe i made some mistakes in guiding this young man i'm not going to make the same mistakes for right. this one 